Oh, hello. Welcome to another Tabletop Impulse video. Um, the Kill Team 2022 Annual has been announced. Fantastic. So, I've been saying for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages and ages on various videos, we really, really, really need an annual for Kill Team. Uh, most recently in a video asking if we were going to get free rules, uh, like Warcry did. We have got some free rules recently, so we got the Kill Team Light rules that I was going to do a video on today, but then they dropped even more news on us. And we got the Intercessor Space Marine Spoke Team rules for free. Um, check out my video on that if you haven't already. But that's not the avenue they're going down for the four White Dwarf teams. They're being packaged up and being put in an annual just like I anticipated they, they would be. I will say, if you missed that previous video where I predicted we would get free rules and then we did. And I said we would need a Kill Team annual and now we've got one. Consider subscribing and then you won't miss any of my weirdly, really strangely prescient videos again. Okay. Um, had to get the plug in there. Come on, we've we got to get to a thousand subs. Um, I know that some people will be disappointed that they've not got free PDFs, but personally, I love a book. I am, I, I, you know, it's funny, it depends on the group. I've got one group of guys that I game with, and every time you go to game with them, they're all on phones or even a laptop, like looking at stuff online. And then I've got other groups that I game with, and everyone's book based. I'm more of a book person. Um, so for me, this is great. Um, if you're a kind of electronic person when you're gaming, then I guess you might have preferred a PDF, but, um, yeah, we're getting a book, so good for some, not so good for others. So let's have a talk first about the Galapox Infected. So for those of you who are new to the hobby, or to the game of Kill Team, I really should say, the Galapox Infected and the Euclidean Star Striders were two of the um, two of the teams that came out for Kill Team 2018, and they were they were um, unique among Kill Team 2018 teams. In that they were the only teams that were totally uh, bespoke teams, created for Kill Team, um, didn't draw off from 40k at all. In the same way as we get an Imperial Navy uh, in, in the upcoming into the Dark Box, and in the same way as the Bloodied don't have any counterparts in 40k, these two teams were designed just for Kill Team. Um, they had some models that were designed uh, by John Blanche, um, which is why they have that kind of unique look to them. Uh, these up here are my uh, Galapox Infected. They're not my best ever paint jobs, okay? They were painted at the height of Contrast Mania. Um, so I bought Road Trader the first time around, so I own both of these teams. So it's great to be getting some, some rules for them. If you don't own these teams, they will be releasing them in boxes, they've said. Right, let's have a think about the Galapox Infected. So I'll tell you what you're going to get in the Galapox Infected box. You're going to get three Nightmare Hulks, okay? That's this green guy here, this uh, fleshy guy in the back here, and this fleshy guy here with an octopus, um, an orange octopus for one of his two arms. You get Vulgar Thrice Cursed, which is this fourth big guy in the middle here with a um, an oven in his belly. Now, I should explain that Kill Team 2018, for those of you that didn't play that, had a mechanic called Commanders. And Commanders was like an alternate mode of play. Just like um, in Kill Team now, as we go forwards, people can decide, oh, maybe we're going to play on the Galadark or we're going to play um, on uh, Open Map, and that's going to change the game. Um, back in Kill Team 18, you decided your opponent, do you want to play a game called Commanders or do you want to play regular Kill Team? And if you played Commanders, it increased the points limit because there used to be a points um, a points buy system just like there is in Warcry. And you got to use these powerful figures called Commanders. And if you were playing the other teams, you got to bring things like a Space Marine Librarian or, um, you know, an Eldar Farseer, things like that, right? So he was originally a Commander. I'm guessing because they want to use the model, he'll be toned down a little bit. Um, and then... We've got three Galapox mutants. Uh, hard to see in my picture. There's one here, okay. There's one here, and there's one at the back here. Now they've actually shown us the stat card from the new annual for the Galapox mutant. So Galapox mutant, the Galapox works nightmare changes to its victims, deadening their nerves and twisting their bodies into gross and dangerous new forms. 
Melded with lumps of malfunctioning technology and stolen metalwork, they lurch into the fight with static faced groans, or static laced groans, I should say. So they move only two circle, right? So they're like Death Guard, they're going to be really slow. APL 2, Group Activation 2, Defense 3, a save of 5 plus 7 wounds. Now, Group Activation 2, and you get 3 in the box. Now, it's worth saying there's 23 models in this box on these sprues. Are they going to make it so that you're going to need to buy two boxes anyway because you're going to want to field Galapox Mutants and Septs of 2, so you're going to want to field four of them? Or are they going to make it to the only one to field two of them? I don't know. The devil's going to be in the detail. Um, they said in the in the text here, um, the adversaries of the Galabox infected spore from a techno-organic plague that seeps from corrupted warp drives. The followers of Nurgle can overwhelm enemies with incredibly tough nightmare hulks. Right, those those guys. Shambling Galapox mutants and a swarm of Gribbly minions. We'll get onto those later. They're one of the most durable kill teams to ever enter the kill zone. So they have a thing called a Techno Curse. Uh, I've not copied everything. It said something about the Techno Curse turning off enemy guns, right? Causing them to malfunction. We don't know the rules for the Techno Curse. They're on page 68 of the book we haven't got yet. Okay. But they're going to have something about. Not letting you shoot them, turning off your guns, making your equipment decay. Don't know. They're also probably all going to have disgustingly resilient. Certainly the Galapox mutants have disgustingly resilient, so we know what that is. Okay. And then the mutants. The mutants all have Gela crust masks. Each time the operative fights in combat or a shooting attack is made against it, in the result successful hit step of that combat or shooting attack, each time an attack dice would inflict critical damage on the operative, you can choose for that attack dice to inflict normal damage instead. That's a powerful ability. Okay. That's a powerful ability. Um, so what have we got here? We've got guys that are slow. they got a 5 up save. Some kind of ability that stops them getting shot as easily. Disgustingly resilient. And the ability to turn off crits that come towards them. So we're getting a picture of what the team's going to be like. Slow, resilient, hard to kill. Not a lot of ranged firepower. There's no guns on any of these models. Now, they've put a frag grenade on the card here for the Galapox Mutant. Looking at the models, it looks to me like one of the three that you're going to get in the box has a heavy axe. Okay. And the other two have frag grenades. They have grenades on their belt. And they have improvised weapon and mutated limb. Right? Now I'm guessing the team's going to be allowed to have multiple frag grenades. Because by having frag grenade, Thank you, motorbike. By having frag grenades on the card, it does bypass... Um, it does bypass the limit. Because it's a limit to taking them from equipment or getting them from the equipment table as a grenadier. If you have frag grenades on your card, yeah, you'll get them for each one. The devil's going to be in the detail because having a frag grenade isn't that great, okay? It's an indirect weapon, yes, but it's limited one shot. And otherwise, you're stuck with four attacks, hitting on fours, two, three. Relentless is good, okay? I prefer the heavy axe that's only three attacks, hitting on fours, but you've got four, five, and brutal. You can do a bit more damage with the heavy axe, perhaps. Um... I don't know, actually. Maths. Because I've got extra attack. Maybe the extra attack is better. Let me know in the comments which of these is a better melee weapon. But then only two damage versus four on a normal. Mm. Mm. Again, the devil's going to be in the detail about how you can actually assemble this team. Um, you know, can you just take the three mutants that you get in the box? But then they got GA2. So are they going to have you buying multiple boxes? If there are multiple boxes and I want to run them, I'm going to end up... I'm not, I wouldn't just play them out of the box like that, like I've got them painted. But if I have to buy a second box, I'll end up wanting to strip and repaint the ones that I've got. We'll see. We'll have to see. You get loads in this box, though. It's going to be so annoying if you, if you decide that you need to buy a second box. Because you're going to have loads of stuff I'm sure you won't be able to use. Because as it is, you've got 23 models. So you couldn't roster all of these. But what I see happening is that you want more of these mutants. Right? So, because they're the sort of standard size thing. But I don't know. I suppose you could use Poxwalkers to bulk up your number of mutants. Right? 
Do a little bit of conversion, maybe. You get four Ice Stinger Swarms. These are these fly type things. Okay, you've got no idea what they're going to do because they've got not got weapons model them. You get floor glitchlings, which are these um, nurgling like things, right? You got four curse mites, which are these things that I painted purple. One, two, three, four. And you get four sludge grubs, which are the maggoty things. Uh, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And they seem to have a, a projectile vomit thing going on. It, because they're not a human team, they're not like an Imperial team, they haven't got weapons, you can't really make a guess about what the team's going to do other than hit stuff in combat, right? How good it's going to be hitting stuff in combat, we don't know. Exactly how this Techno Curse is, we, we don't know. But I'm guessing that it's going to be slow. Maybe the flying things will be quick, okay? They'll be able to like zoom around and scout things out and maybe claim objectives, who knows, okay? Um, so the Devil's in the detail, but they look interesting. Movement 2 is sad. Maybe they'll have somewhere around it. We just don't know. Um, it's less sad in the Gallo Dark, maybe. Right, but then their only melee weapon is this indirect grenade. And indirect's been severely nerfed in Gallo Dark. So, interesting. Really hard to form a view of them until we have more information. But that's everything we've got so far. And they're pretty interesting. Let's do the same for the Euclidean Star Striders. Now, the Euclidean Star Strider models are a bit more legible, right? In, because they're humans and we can kind of see what they're going to do, okay? So you get four Voidsmen with las guns. One, two, uh, no, I've written four. You get three. Three Voidsmen with guns. One, two, three, yeah? Um, you get a Voidsman with a rotor cannon. And we've been given, and it's notice it's not Voidsman and Gunner. It's not two separate sheets. Because it's got a lasgun and rotor cannon. That doesn't mean that he's got a lasgun and a rotor cannon. It means on the sheet where it goes through the whole team. It's like you can take any number of voidsmen. And then I would guess it will say one voidsman may be armed with a rotor cannon. So what's a voidsman? It's a standard mortal guy. Um, move 3, APL 2, GA 1, Def 3. 5 up save is disappointing. They look like they should have at least a 4 up save. That's disappointing. Seven wounds, pretty standard. Uh, Lasgun is a Lasgun. The rotor cannon is six dice, hitting on four, uh, three, four. Fusillade and heavy. This is a very underwhelming card, right? I mean, as a heavy weapon, that's okay. It's not bad. But do they have something in their armory that lets you buy off heavy? They might do. We don't know. Do they have something in their armory that you just is you know gonna be an auto take for this guy with the rotor cannon? There's lots of teams like that, right? Where they give you something in the armory, and you're like oh, actually, oh, I see, right? I've got my two equipment point or my three equipment point tax, and now the rotor cannon's actually good. Could be, could be. So you've got your Gavoidsman, and then this fellow here was called Voidmaster uh, Nitsch, Nitsch, and he has an Artificer shotgun and uh, a last pistol. Okay, so again, depends what they decide to do. Maybe they'll give him a 3-4 shotgun or even like a 4-4 four, four shotgun. Now, it's worth saying, he used to be, the, he was the leader and the, the rogue trader who will come to it in a minute was a um, a commander, right? I explained that, the old commander's rule thing on the previous page. So he was the standard leader and then she was the commander that you could bring in in commander's games. That's what his kind of thing was. So maybe he'll have some sort of rule where he can order the armsmen about, buff them up when they're near him. These are his, like, these are his, you know, thematically, the team was in two halves, right? So this was his squad, right, including the doggo, Aximilian. They've got a dog, right? So this was his squad. And then they went on missions for the rogue trader. And then these three were the rogue traders' uh, retainers. Yeah. So these are kind of your these are kind of your, your player characters, right? And this is like your NPC backup. I mean, let's be fair. This is just the if you play if you play an RPG, this is the one guy who actually takes that thing in the book. Just like oh, I'm going to have four followers, right? So he's a PC and these are his four followers, right? And then these are the other PCs in the party. If you want to think about it that way, right? Um, you got Canosso Pond, the Death Cultist. So we're going to have a combat character of some kind. Um, death cultists are really cool. Uh, we don't have any rules for death cultists in Kill Team so far to guess what they're about. Usually a power sword. 
usually some kind of decent um, survivability by um, being really, really quick and really good reflexes. She looks like she's got some kind of grenade there. It could be an interesting kind of a gas grenade or a smoke grenade or something. Don't know. Um, we've got Larsen van der Graus, who's a tech priest, who certainly could have. Uh, you know, he's got a very fancy gun. He could be bringing some ranged AP, potentially. Potentially short-ranged AP, some kind of pistol. Okay, he's got giant Tesla coils on his backpack. He's got some kind of device there that he's holding as well. Um, we've got Sanistasia Minst, who is the medic. Um, yep, it's a medic. Funnily enough, she's got a similar hat to the uh, Sisters Novitiates with the Fleur de Lis kind of straps on her forehead by a little bit of um, a little bit of leather. Right, which is interesting. It, I hope I'm not making this up. It's implied, I seem to remember from... And this is a weird thing to stick in your brain, isn't it? But it is implied in the text in the old Rogue Trader book when these guys released that these two are romantically involved, the Rogue Trader and, and the Medic. I think. I seem to recall that. Um, and then you've got the Rogue Trader, who was, um, like I say, a commander, so more powerful. And she had an heirloom pistol and a monomolecular cane rapier. So they can do whatever the designers of Kill Team want them to do. It's not a plasma pistol and a power sword. It could just be a plasma pistol and a power sword. It could be better. It could be worse. It could be more nuanced. We don't know. Okay. And in a little bit of text they gave us, um, the Euclidean Star Striders are the original shipborne navy team. Okay. So they're, they're kind of the original version of the, the, the breaches. Battling the dangers of the void long before the whippersnappers of the Imperial Navy showed up. Ah, oh, that's good. The rogue trader boss and her coterie of aides grant the voidsman crew access to advanced technology and powerful support abilities, including covering fire from the ship itself. So they're going to have, like, the card they've given us is really lackluster. I'm guessing these guys are all going to kind of be really lackluster. Um, I'm guessing that Van der Graus here is going to hand out loads of really interesting things. I'm guessing they're going to have an interesting armory and they're going to have interesting off-board support abilities. With this, I could see it being you buy the box and that is your box, right? Because these guys, where do they keep them all having names? I won't know, but these guys, one, two, three, four, five, were all named characters. So I can't see you getting to double up on any of those, okay? I'm sure that technically it'll be phrased like you can take four guardsmen, and four voidsmen, and one of the voidsmen can have a rotor cannon. Um, so theory, I don't want a rotor cannon. I'll take something suboptimal. I'll just take loads of basic Billy basic voidsmen. But I don't think I think this has the look of being. Um, this is your box. This is your ten man team, uh, or nine men and a dog. You know, fill your boots. They could be really annoying with it, couldn't they? And say like, oh well, it's a ten man team. You, you need to buy a second box to get like one, <laughs> one voidsman or something like that. I have these, uh, unpainted, assembled and unpainted. Maybe I will get to work on painting them. It's funny, I like these better than the Gellerbox Infected. The Gellerbox Infected, I don't really like the models that much. And I painted them because I'm like, well, I want to have... They will lend themselves to contrast. Um, I want to try out this one thick coat business. And I'm not that fussed if they end up looking nasty. Um, in my... With the wisdom of hindsight, I guess, I think these actually could be really good just because the thing they have going for them is durability. Durability, 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 and durability is the thing in Kill Team. And if you've got what looks to be like a durable horde, that's insane. Well, I'm excited, though, about the Star Striders because it's a cool painting project. Miniatures I already have, right? They're sitting back here on the shelves. Um... That I need to decide how I'm going to paint them, what I'm going to colour, I'm going to undercoat them, and that kind of thing. But um, these, I can understand where they might work, right? I can understand how they might work, and these are these are really cool. These are much cooler than the Imperial Navy, if you ask my uh, <laughs> opinion, because they're just so over the top and ridiculous and amazing. Just as a final thing, I've not put it on the slide. I don't really think they're going to do it. Um, there were two new rogue, two additional rogue traders that were released as part of Blackstone Fortress. There was Janus Drake that came in the core game, and there was um, the other lady who came in Ascension, whose name I don't remember because I never managed to snag 
a copy of Blackstone Fortress Ascension. It's like one of my most wanted things. It just for the miniatures in the box is Blackstone Fortress Ascension. Um, I regret really have the biggest like regret from not buying Blackstone Fortress Ascension. Um, when they did rules in these guys got rules in 40k ages ago in a random book. Um, and when they did that, they included rules if you wanted to have them led by one of those other two rogue traders. So you had the three different builds of rogue trader. It's possible they do that again. And you've got three different builds of rogue trader. So you can run them as, um, you know, maybe they get rid of these names. Can also Pond, Larsen, Van der Graus and uh, Sanastasia Minst. And they genericize these and they call them like Death Cult Assassin you know, Tech Priest Explorator and Combat Medic or whatever it is, and they let you have different loadouts for the leader, and then they, um, either they leave you to source those models on your own, or they they couldn't just bring them back because they're sprued together with other random stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, it could be that they let you do the whole, the, the, you know, the, the Ascension box, I'm pretty sure, was another Rogue Freighter's whole entire crew. That you could swap out and have with um you could have the armsman and then have different characters potentially um probably though it's just going to be this box and off you go i just really want them to re-release the ascension stuff because i missed out on those models first time around and non-space marine imperials is is my thing right i really do love non-space marine imperial anything that's like my favorite stuff so yeah uh, what else is in the book? So it's not just those two new teams. They are the headline. So here's interesting. This is a quote from Games Workshop. This 152-page tome is the essential companion for Kill Team, collecting rules and background previously published in White Dwarf magazine and adding the brand new missions and operatives. Chief among these are the Euclidean Star Striders and the Galapox Infected, two factions from the Kill Team of Yore. Now, does that mean we're getting more than two kill teams? Um, or does it mean that they know that the two new kill teams are chief among the things in the book? I'm guessing we're not getting any new kill teams. Because just looking at the front cover of the annual, it features the four white dwarf teams. Um, and the two new ones that they've told us about. So I'm guessing there's only rules in there for five teams. What I should have done, and now I'm going to outsource it to somebody in the comments. I'm really sorry. It's me being really lazy. It's just clocked in my head while I'm recording. They've got 152 pages. So you can go back into White Dwarf and work out how many pages each of those White Dwarf articles. Assume the Euclidean Star Striders and the, um, and the uh, Galapox would get about the same page count. And you work out how many pages you've got left over. But it's not just a book of teams. Okay. Um, so it does say that it's definitely bringing back the four white dwarf teams. That's nailed on. In case I didn't mention that already. So if you needed an official copy of the rules for those four teams. This is your this is your chestnut. Okay. And then three new mission packs. Three new mission packs had a variety of unique scenarios. Including multiplayer critical operations. Desperate Last Stand, um, Shadow Operations, and Tense tents Sentries Games. There are 15 missions in all, and some hobby ideas and miniatures galleries to give you inspiration for characterful new kill zones. So, we assume, I assume, that the six Sentries missions are a reprint of the Sentries article from White Dwarf. Hopefully they've tweaked it. Hopefully they've tweaked it because there was a germ of a good idea in Sentries. Okay, but as you know, if you saw the battle report on this channel, me and Zimbab played one game and we just, we're not queuing up to play it again, right? It was just like, you play it once and you think, well, that's massively, massively unbalanced in favour of the player who is the, um, the, the commando, basically, that gets to have the, the things to try and infiltrate. So I'm not excited about that unless they've, I'm excited if they've tweaked it, but I feel like it's going to be a straight reprint. Um, so that leaves us with nine missions. So one pack's going to be, you know, maybe it's going to be a pack of six and a pack of three. Or a pack of, uh, you know, four and five, whatever they decide to do. 
Um, Desperate Last Stand Shadow Operations. So Shadow Operations is code for narrative. I've not touched the narrative stuff in Killzone yet, in Kill Team at all. Maybe I should, but I've just not. I've not touched it yet. Maybe that's something that me and Mrs. Tiao means in battle do eventually we'll play a narrative campaign and see how that goes. Um, because there's loads of the game, loads of the stuff that I've just not ever really fiddled with. Um, you know, and we've all got. Now, with the intercessors, like, we could play a narrative campaign. Um, you know, I could play my novitiates. Zimbad could play his intercessors. And uh, Mrs. T.I. could play, I presume, legionaries. And we could actually play games and advance and do a campaign. Now that Zim has settled on a non-compendium team that he likes, we may actually do that. So look out for that on the channel. I have to float. The first they're hearing about it is is, is is watching this video. So I'll have to float that past them. But um, that could be a thing. Um, and then multiplayer missions. Especially if they work with three players. We'll definitely play them. If we if they need four players. It'll be a bit of an ask. Um, to try and find a fourth player. I'm cautiously optimistic about multiplayer missions. It's a bit funny to me that they're calling them critical operations. So critical operations is, is their code word for matched play. Are these going to be matched play multiplayer missions? Is that a thing? Balanced multiplayer? Like, since when has any Games Workshop multiplayer game ever been balanced? They've been fun. Great fun at parties. Some of my fondest Warhammer memories of multiplayer games. I'm not knocking them. But to give them the critical operations tag, but then again, the sentries also have the critical operations tag. So it best it can best be defined as not that you you can play these in a standalone game. You don't have to be playing narrative, right? The other thing to touch on really briefly is they did put out this picture of Gene Steelers uh, fighting Admech at the bottom of the article. Is that some kind of hint that a bespoke Gene Steeler team is on the cards? These don't look like new models. Maybe they could be a new White Dwarf team. Maybe they just said, get some things, fight some things, and put them on a kill team background, do a picture. I don't know. But, um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that for a little bit of speculation at the last minute. Right, final thoughts. I think this is great for the game. I think this book coming out is absolutely great for the game. I'm thrilled for it to come out. The accessibility of those four teams means that we haven't got random bits of the game stuck in in dead white dwarves right and then we've got two brand new teams hype for that always hype for a new team so many new teams coming now how anybody can explain complain that they're not getting i know how people can complain they're not getting enough new teams because there's people out there that are still waiting for plague marines or they're still waiting for um necrons or they're still waiting for dark elder or whatever it is but loads of new teams coming out now we you know two here plus the space marines Plus the two more coming into the dark. Plus we've got the four that they did in White Dwarf in a, in a, in a, in a more um, public format. Now I can see there not being a big draw to this book for some people. If you don't, if you have your team that you love, and so you're not really interested in playing with the the Gellapox or the um, the the Star Striders, and the models don't speak to you because you're a weirdo, these are some of the best models Games Workshop has ever produced. What are you doing? Um, and you're not that fussed on we you knew sentries was a bit of a miss and you don't play shadow ops and you don't have much of an urge to play fun multiplayer games i can see this not being a big draw for people who are in that mainstream competitive minded um especially if you even if you play one of these four teams if you've got your white dwarf and you're happy with that you know i'm i'm hype because i like to know what's going on obviously i run a kill team channel um talking about and reviewing this book will be a must and also just, I really, an excuse to paint up my Euclidean Star Striders, that'll be really cool, and get them on the table and play some games with them. Um, I can see as well, if you're waiting for Euclidean Star Striders or Gellabox Infected, and Marine's got a free PDF, and yours is behind a book paywall, that, yeah, that's Marine, it's Marine privilege, isn't it? That's Marine privilege, isn't it? That's what they say these days. If you're a Marine player, you just get all the things... Even for free, it turns out. And if you play a weird side team, you've got to fork over some cash. But, you know. Oh my god, all the Kill Team news. Like, as I said earlier, I plan to make a video today about Kill Team. The Kill Team Light video might come tomorrow, but maybe they'll drop some more news on us tomorrow. Who knows?
Who knows? I really hope that Sunday's video is telling you that all this stuff's gone on the Sunday preview, right? And it'll be available to order next Saturday. Um, I hope that's what I'm able to do. Um, but yeah, wow, an annual. I mean, amazing. Like, what a time to be alive. And I was thinking of diversifying the channel into into doing some Warcry stuff. I've got more Horus Heresy stuff to do, all these things. And we've just been throwing clods and clods and clods and clods of Kill Team at us, right? Clods of it. Brilliant. What a time to be alive, right? Hope you enjoyed that. If you are um, enjoying the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, you know, I've got hours and hours and hours of watch time, right? I've got twice the number of hours of watch time that I would need to monetize the channel. But I have not quite got the thousand subs. So that's really irritating me at the moment. So if you are someone who's watching two or three videos, please give me a sub. Um... I'll plug this again next time, but if you are going to pre-order your Kill Team Annual when it comes up for pre-order, use the Element Games link in the description. Uh, they're a really, really good store in the UK. 20% off everything, and I get a little bit back for sending you their way, so that's great as well. Um, yeah, other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you again tomorrow with, hopefully, the Sunday preview being Kill Team related. No, Saturday tomorrow. So Saturday's video will probably be Kill Team Light and what I think of it and that kind of thing. Sunday, hopefully, will be good news from the Sunday preview. All right. See you guys. Have a great rest of your day, whatever it is that you are choosing to do with it. Bye-bye-bye.